China is marking 60 years of communist rule today with extravagant celebrations and fireworks. In just six decades, the world's most populous country has transformed itself from abject poverty into a major military and economic power. But its path to success has been riddled with mistakes, atrocities and policy reversals. The biggest when China opened its doors to capitalism 30 years ago. China describes itself today as socialism with Chinese characteristics. And despite a poor human rights record, most ordinary Chinese, Chinese appear happy with their improved living standards. From Beijing, uh, Stephen McDonnell explains modern China through the eyes of four of its citizens. China in the first half of the 20th century saw poverty and corruption on a wide scale. Nationalists, communists and warlords struggled for control of the country. Local disunity made way for a brutal Japanese occupation and anti-Japanese resistance became a fertile ground for communist recruitment. At the age of 15, Li Chung Rei was a guerrilla fighter behind Japanese lines. He joined the communists and in early 1949 entered Beijing with the first troops from the People's Liberation Army. When I first arrived in the city to use an old Chinese saying, misery and suffering greeted the eyes everywhere. Now 87 years old, Li was at Tiananmen on the 1st of October 1949 when Mao Zedong walked onto the gate of heavenly peace to claim victory in the civil war by proclaiming the creation of a new country. From the bottom of my heart I felt very excited. The workers, the peasants and the working intellectuals became the real masters of the country. But in the coming decades, Mao's social experiments caused misery of their own. In the late 1950s, the Great Leap Forward created a famine after the state took too much grain from farmers and left them nothing to eat. In the 1960s, the Cultural Revolution sent the country into chaos for a decade as gangs of young Red Guards attacked anyone who wasn't loyal enough to Mao Zedong. After Mao died in 1976, the country would head in a different direction. Human rights abuses continued, especially for Tibetans or Uyghurs wanting to break away from China, and those like Falun Gong seen as challenging Communist Party rule. In 1989, the People's Liberation Army was used to crush mass protests in and around Tiananmen Square. But the opening up of China to outside markets has also opened it up to outside ideas and resulted in an economic boom the likes of which the world has never seen. Economic growth has dragged millions of people out of poverty. We usually only ate meat and fish during spring festival. Now this is our daily diet. Tu Shui Xin is steel production supervisor at Capital Steel's number two steel plant. 20 years ago, living in an apartment building was our dream. Now most of us have realised this dream. It's been a huge change. But even with sustained double-digit economic growth, in most of China, lifestyles are still pretty modest. In modern China, the vast majority of people still don't live in big cities. They live in the small towns and villages like this one, which are dotted all around the country. So if there's to be an analysis of the success or otherwise of the Chinese Communist Party, then the living standards of rural people are crucial. In my parents' time, they didn't have enough to eat or wear. Nowadays, we not only have enough food to eat, but also have enough to sell. Xing Yan Jun and his family have an orchard two hours outside Beijing. In China, an average farmer's income is around $600 a year, compared with $800 a year for a steel worker or $8,000 a year for a bank clerk. 
Recently, the government abolished agriculture taxes, making life much better for poor farmers. Yet Xing Yanjun says there's still one area in which their living standard is still hopelessly inadequate. If we go to any big hospital, it would cost us hundreds of thousands of yuan. Peasants would not have this level of savings. People save money their whole lives, and then, if they're really sick, all their savings will be gone. In the trendy boutiques of Beijing's shopping districts, young people can now buy single items of clothing, which cost as much as a farmer could earn in a year. The country decided to become more wealthy. Decide to be more open. Decide to be more international, and we decide to want to be as developed as America or as other country. We 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 want to. We want our people to live the same way. Let's they do. Twenty-seven-year-old clothing designer Liu Lu is the very model of a modern Chinese sophisticate. Educated in Switzerland, Paris, and New York. She's taken the local fashion scene by storm. Her clients are film stars and the power elite. When my mom sees the new generation, she didn't understand, and especially my grandfather. You know, he, they wouldn't understand. As Beijing marks 60 years since the founding of the People's Republic of China with a mass parade, one old comrade thinks that his country has not turned out the way he'd hoped. These days, officials collude with business people. Deals are done between power and money. This has greatly damaged the base of the people's government. And if Chairman Mao was to come back now, what would he think of modern China? I can definitely tell you what he would say. Those in power have taken the capitalist path. Well, at least a few steps down the road of the capitalist path, Stephen Macdonald in Beijing.